Capitol, originally the Temple of Jupiter, was completed in 507 B.C. Imagine, more than 2,000 years ago. I gotta get pictures of that, Pop. Hey, and there's the Colosseum. Vespasian built it, 80 A.D. Also, Pantheon, Forum. Agrippa, 25 B.C. At last, self and number one son can relax and enjoy fragrance of ancient history. Yes? Mr. Charlie Chan? I am that humble person. My name is Dino Rienzi, Mr. Chan. Oh, great pleasure. When I heard you were in Rome, I came straight to you. I need your help. Oh, I regret. Number one son and I are on vacation. But a girl has been killed, Mr. Chan. Look. She was young, beautiful, and now she is dead. I want you to find the killer, Mr. Chan. Have always understood that Italian police are highly efficient, Mr. Rienzi. The police. And how often the wrong people get hurt. If you could only keep the innocent from being involved, Mr. Chan. Including yourself, Mr. Yancey? Now I must be most honest. Yes, Mr. Chan, including myself. You see, John Marsh was a, a great friend of mine. And I am afraid there will be much unpleasant publicity for me and for other friends of mine, unless the murderer is found at once. Maybe I can help you, Mr. Rienzi. I use the Soderheim method. It's the latest system of logical deduction. Pop, you go look at those old ruins. I'm gonna take on the case. Most kind of you, but... Uh, but Mr. Chen, they told me you never refused anyone in trouble. As Mr. Barnum once said, when buying care for a sideshow, two heads better than one, I shall be very glad to lend humble, old-fashioned assistance to modern methods of number one son. <laughs> a thousand thanks. Now, I think... Number one son has important question to ask you. I do? Have you yourself alibi for time of murder? Oh, yeah, that's right. Have you? It is not so good, I fear. I was at my villa in Austria, alone. I must confide old detective saying, when client wants trap set for another, sometimes gets caught by saying himself. I'll take that risk, Mr. Jack. My address. You can reach me there at any time. I better get busy right away. Oh, but of course, and by all means. Now, as your partner, tell me, where are you going to start? Uh, with the police. Find out what they know and go on from there. One moment. You have a very excellent idea, but suggest you change dressing gown to less conspicuous garment, hmm? Oh, yeah. Operator, get me police headquarters, please. Inspector Galvani, please. Pronto. Oh, you, Inspector. See? Si. Charlie Chan speaking. Charlie Chan, but here in Rome is not possible. Yes, in Rome, and so happy to talk to old friend. I hope you are strong enough and able to cope with distinguished detective about to pay your visit. Delighted, old friend. Delighted. I need your help badly. I have been working on a case and getting, how you say, uh, nowhere fast. A case of great importance to my government. A leakage of information. About our new and very secret reactor plant. So sorry, Inspector, but it is not worthless self who plans to visit you. It is my number one son, Barry, who, like all boys, wants to be a modern scientific detective. I am committing him to help me on the case. Oh, oh, I see. Well, uh, I am very occupied, uh, but never mind. For you, anything, my friend. Thank you, Inspector. And as soon as murder case completed, I shall be honored to assist you on serious problem that is troubling you. Again, deepest thanks for any help to my son, and also deepest sympathies. I thought I'd better look kind of conservative. Is this all right? Oh, very sedate. Like nuclear explosion. Oh, uh, it's quiet. If you think so, my son. Now, I have just called Inspector Galvani, old friend of former days. He expects you. Gee, thanks, Pop. Oh, I hope he doesn't think I'm muscling in on him. Of course, I'll let him make the arrest after I solve the case. Oh, I'm sure you will, and very, very generous of you. I'll be leaving now. Oh, by the way, what are you going to do? Newspaper says Miss March was singer at Acadian Club. I shall pay visit to Sam. Might as well. Though I reckon the police have already been there. 
Well, keep digging, Pop. <laughs> Martha Ricci, and I own this club. What can I do for you, Signor Chan? I would be most grateful for answers to a few questions. Questions? What about? Matter concerning unfortunate murder, a beautiful American singer. Ah, uh, yes. La Torverina. Well, of course, if I can help. But I know so little. You are from the police, Signor? No, quite unofficial. But I've been employed by Mr. Dino Rienzi to make inquiry. Rienzi? Seems surprised. Do you know this gentleman? Oh, yes. He used to come to the club a great deal, but lately not so much. One imagines that he and the... <laughs> but it is information you want, not gossip, no? In murder investigation, Miss Ritchie, everything is grist to detectives mill. Please continue. At one time, it seemed that he and the little Miss Joan were in love. One hoped perhaps wedding bells for them. But the last few weeks, very seldom we see Signor Enzi. Forgive me, Signora, you are engaged. Mr. Chan will excuse me. What is it, Alfredo? I've picked up the special order, Signora. The very special lobsters, you know. You put them in the office for the moment, please. Very good, Signora. Forgive me. Now, where were we? I am wondering whether or not Mr. Dino Rienzi had found a new interest in heart. Hmm? <laughs> Once again, it is merely gossip. Please, Miss Ritchie, I need information. They say he wanted to marry a rich American widow. Rich beyond dreams, senor. But I do not know. Perhaps you know name of American lady? In Rome, very little is kept secret. Her name is Carol Vane. And the gods have been very kind to her. Not only is she very rich, she is also very beautiful. I wonder if you could inform me where Miss Marsh was coming from when she met tragic death at station. Oh, yes. From Paris. She had been there for two, three days only to buy clothes. But I understand such garments are very expensive. You've paid Miss Marsh a great deal of money, I suspect. Well, the usual amount for a singer of her standing. I am most grateful for a generous assistance. You see, I have become, how you say, very attached to Joan. Please find her assassin, Senor Chan. But do humble best. Now, routine question. Where were you time of murder? Oh. The police have already checked on me. I was here doing my books. My accountant was with me. Most excellent alibi. Uh, now, one small request, please. Of course. You have perhaps a dress of beautiful American widow. Certainly I'm willing to help, Mr. Chan. Frankly, I can't see that my personal life has anything to do with this murder. Then why not endeavor to assist humble, unofficial self? You win. Yes, Dino and I are, well, in love, I guess. We're hoping to be married sometime in the near future. Oh, then permit me to offer my best felicitation. Thanks. Now I must ask a question. What now? You knew Joan Marsh? I knew she existed, if that's what you mean. I never met her. Oh, I see. I don't think I don't know what you're getting at, Mr. Chan. All right, Dino ran around with her. That was before he met me. He hadn't seen her in weeks. You are sure of this? He promised me he wouldn't see her again, and I believed him. Mrs. Vane, if he did not keep promise, what then? We'd have been through. I told him so. Do you think I'd have stood for him two-timing me with that little tramp? Now, if you please, one more question. Where were you time of murder? What time was it? 4.32 yesterday afternoon. I'm walking my dog, as I usually am at that time of day. Did you perhaps walk in direction of railway station? As a matter of fact, I did. It's quite near here. But if you think I killed Joan Marsh, you're crazy. I am most grateful. Mr. Chan, I was still seeing John Marsh. I see. 
Then you had reasons for breaking promise to a beautiful American widow. I tried to break with Joan, Mr. Chan, but she would not let me. She, she threatened me, a sort of uh, blackmail. Oh. On what grounds, please? She said she would tell Carol Vane I was penniless. She knew, as I did, it would mean the end of my hopes. Then you have no money. <laughs> my credit is still excellent. I have the villa at Ostia, my flat in Rome. I go everywhere, do everything. But soon, I must marry money. You understand? I understand many marriages are not necessarily made in heaven. But tell me, did you visit Miss Marsh at the club? She had the key to this apartment. Signor Dino Rienzi? That's him, all right, Inspector. Pop! What are you doing here? Oh, just giving old-fashioned assistance to a newfangled son. Oh, well, that's all cleaned up. Inspector Gavani's got a warrant. A moment, to... please. Later, we compare notes. Now it is business. You are the registered owner of a 38 caliber automatic, Signor? Yes. What of it? Where is the gun? I haven't seen it in... Wait. It's in that desk, I think. Here is a such warrant. I propose to open that desk. gun has been fired very recently, Signor. That's impossible. I haven't used it in years. You are aware that John Marsh was shot and killed by a bullet from a 38 automatic? What do you say? Ballistic tests will show if this was the gun that killed John Marsh. But it couldn't be. The tests will show, Signor. Meantime, I must ask you to accompany me to the police station. But Mr. Chan... Mr. Chan, I didn't do it! A visit to police station cannot prove guilt if innocent. I suggest, Mr. Rianzi, you go willingly. Signor. The murder gun. The tests prove it beyond doubt. Here is the report. Less than 48 hours and we have the killer. It's good, no? My client. He must have thought Pop and me were dumb. Report shows no fingerprints on gun? My dear old friend, even amateur criminals know about fingerprints these days. Never, but never do they leave them on guns. Great pity such information is so widespread. Might make it very difficult to prove Rienzi handled gun. But my dear friend, with your own eyes, you watch me take the gun from the desk of the guilty man. My apologies, Inspector, but this does not prove the fact that Rienzi fired shot. His gun, his apartment. A useless alibi and a motive as big as St. Peter's. Come, Charlie, be reasonable. Also very reasonable to suggest that anyone having access to apartment could have taken gun. Used it, then returned Sam. Can you perhaps produce witness who saw Rienzi at railway station? Well, no. But from the angle of flight of the bullet, it came from a spot that is always clouded with taxis, trucks, and so on. Obviously, the shot was fired from a moving vehicle. Rienzi has a car. Many cars in Rome, Inspector. But now to return to question about access to apartment. Unfortunate Miss Marsh had a key. You suggest that she shot herself with Rienzi's gun from a vehicle 50 yards away, then replaced the gun after she was dead? My dear old friend Galvani, I'm suggesting nothing. However, it would be most interesting to see dead girl's purse. Same as available? If you wish. Pop! Do you think maybe Rienzi isn't guilty? Cannot say, my son, but can say with confidence. Obvious answer is not always solution to crime. Her purse, Charlie. Oh, thank you, Inspector. The key of her apartment in the Via Cassani and the key of her dressing room at the club. We checked. But no key to Rienzi's apartment. So what does that prove? It proves nothing except cast great doubt on guilt of number one suspect, Rienzi. You think I have not a case, then? Well, you have a very good case, Inspector. Kind of case all defense lawyers welcome with open arms. You think I should let Rienzi go? Not for humble ex-policeman to say. However, do not think it would be dangerous to release Rienzi. Of course, providing he remains in Rome. You win, Charlie. And all our thanks to you, Mr. Chan. I regret to my happy reunion, but must point out, Mr. Rienzi is still a number one suspect. Oh, but Pop and I'll get him off the hook, won't we, Pop? I have warned client only if he is innocent, my son. 
Of course he's innocent. Dino isn't capable of a cold-blooded killing. You will go on, won't you, Mr. Chan, and prove that he didn't do it? I shall go on and endeavor to prove who did. Meanwhile, Mr. Rienzi would like answers to a few questions. But certainly, Mr. Chan. Any way I can help. But, uh, my darling, perhaps you would care to return to your apartment and make yourself even more ravishing. So that when I take you out to dinner this evening, every man in the room will envy me and hate me. Why don't you come right out and say what you really mean, Dina? My angel, what? I'm to get the heck out because you don't want me to hear some of the answers. That's it, isn't it? Such is the fact that you don't have two red cents to rub together. But Carol, how? How? Your ex-girlfriend told me. John. The same. She seemed to think I'd toss you right back at her when I knew. But you did not. No. I have enough money for two, and I kind of like to be the one who pulls the strings. The dominant type. That's me. Oh, and how I suffered just in case the thought of losing you. Kindly forgive unromantic interruption. But slight discrepancy now, Pat. Yesterday, Mrs. Vane, you said you never met Miss Marsh. And today? Please explain. Okay, so I lied. But only because I didn't want to be mixed up in this whole thing. I did meet her. Only once. She came to my apartment. For a purpose, I imagine, of informing you about future husband's financial difficulties. You should have seen her face when I told her I didn't give a darn. And when was unfortunate lady's visit, Mrs. Vane? See, I know it was the day she went to Paris. She told me she was on her way to the railroad station. Did she ever ask you for money? Wouldn't have done her any good if she had. No, she didn't. In fact, when she opened her purse, I saw a great wad of money. She had plenty, believe me. You have been most helpful, Mrs. Vane. Thank you very much. Mr. Rienzi, did perhaps Miss Marsh ever ask you for money? Me, Mr. Chan? No. In fact... Yes? Recently, she seemed to have money to spare. She... She offered to lend me some. Naturally, I refused. Naturally. Wonder where she got it from, Pop. Not from that crummy club. I assume she had a, a friend. But when I asked her, she said something rather odd. What did she say, please? She said, some people find a fortune in an oyster. But she said she found hers in a lobster. Lobster? The lobsters are picked up by Alfredo Sabati each Thursday, and always from the same source. An old fisherman called Toselli, who in addition to his lobster pots, has a small boat for coastal fishing. Nothing known against him. And what all this has got to do with the murder of an American singer, I'd give a year's pay to know. Cannot say, but would like slight information, please. At your service as ever, Charlie. Coastline where fisherman Toselli does his fishing. This coast is fortified? It is. And even more important, our atomic reactor station is secretly being built somewhere along that coast. Hmm. Inspector. Would suggest we meet tonight at Acadian Club after it closes. At two o'clock in the morning? Best time for dirty work. Stay here and keep watch, my son. Also, close door. Hmm? Okay, Pop.
Now get the lobsters. Ejected cartridge case from 38 pistol. No sign of inspector? No, not yet. And it's way after two. Most necessary to catch criminals red-handed. Shall confront them now alone. No, let me go. No, an order. You wait here. I go alone. Tell inspector. of the reactor station. Mr. Selly must be commended for this. Good evening. Please excuse impolite entrance without ceremony. So, Joan Marsh discovered your secret and tried to make a fortune by blackmail. Very imprudent for unfortunate young lady. Of course, you killed her with Rienzi's gun, having stolen her key to his apartment. No, Alfredo. Inspector, a little bit late, but most glad to see you. Introducing two people who have been spying for a foreign government. Gee, traitors. I also found this in Alfredo's van. No doubt bullet that killed Miss Marsh. After all, seems we had two cases in one, Inspector. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Get going, you two. Say, Pop, I was kind of worried about you going in on your own that way. Oh, well, as number one son would say, old pop still packs good wallop. Mm -hmm. 